everybody, and welcome to the Historical Sew Along series, where we'll take you through the ins and outs of some simple historical sewing projects to build up your wardrobe and your hand skills. Maybe even both at the same time. From prep work to finished product, we'll do it together, following step-by-step instructions with some tips and tricks sprinkled in along the way. This series is meant for all skill levels, but it is especially nice for beginners to build confidence while building a solid toolkit of techniques. So feel free to pause, rewind, rewatch, and fast forward to whichever parts you need as many times as necessary. So with all of that said, let's get to the good stuff. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Shift Sew Along part three, where we are going to seam our bodies, we will put in reinforcements, we will hem, and we're going to take care of our neckline. So hopefully by the end of this video, you will have a completely hand-sewn 18th century shift. Let's go ahead and get started by grabbing our pieces from last week. So we should have a sleeve or two, actually, preferably two, reinforcement strips, like you see here, that will go over the shoulder. You wanna also have two of the reinforcement strips that will go on top of the shoulder. Uh, and I've already put one sleeve in and uh, put a reinforcement strip on. So I only have one sleeve and one strip right now, but you should have two because you haven't put anything on. And then you should have your shift body as well. Now you can see that I've already started uh, kind of getting the body seamed up and getting the sleeve put in uh, because I wanted to be able to kind of show you what that's gonna look like as we start putting your shift together. So first things first, we are going to put the top reinforcement on the shift. And I know we haven't cut the neckline yet, but that's okay because if you have not cut a shift neckline before, that can be one of the trickiest parts. And so we are actually going to save that for the very last thing that we do. If you already have a shift and you love the neckline on that shift, you know that it works for you already, you can go ahead and set that shift aside and we will use the neckline from that for your neckline if you want to. But if you have never made a shift before, or if you're not happy with any of the necklines on your shifts uh, to date, then we will go ahead and show you hopefully how to find a neckline that works a little bit better for you. So as I said, the first thing that we want to do is we're going to actually put those reinforcements on the top of the shoulder. And these have to go on before we put on the sleeve because they actually get tucked into that sleeve seam. So if they don't go on first, we're not gonna be able to tuck them under. So as you can see, what I have done is I have found the top of my shift. So I took where I had it folded over from before and found the fold. I finger pressed it really, really well to give myself a really nice crease there. And then what I did was I took the reinforcement for the top of the shoulder, which you see here, and I prepped it by doing two things. I'm gonna move these out of the way so you can see a little better. But the first thing that I did was I turned under about a quarter inch or so. I gave it a really solid finger pressing. And I'm just gonna do that for the other side as well. All right, so when it's done, you have a strip that looks a little bit like this, hopefully. <laughs> Yours might be a little bit longer, um, a little bit thicker, that's okay. Uh, but it needs to have that fold under because you can see here, 
that when we stitch this down, it's actually going to get stitched with a back stitch on top of it. So from the outside of the garment. And you can see that there's actually a little flap on either side. So we're not actually hemming down those edges. This is how we see that in those original garments as well. So they uh, kind of stitch through and we see those little flappy edges on either side when that reinforcement is present. So that's how we're gonna do it today. Now to keep it kind of nice and straight, one thing that you can do on this piece, even though uh, we maybe don't see it as much on other seams in the shift, is you could pull a thread right along the section where you want your stitches to end up. And that can just leave you a hollow that you can stitch in. Now pulling a thread is optional here. You don't have to pull a thread, but if you have been having difficulty maybe keeping your stitches straight along the edge and having a good distance, this is something that could help you manage that a little bit. So if you are going to pull a thread, you wanna pull the thread about an eighth of an inch or so in from the edge. So roughly kind of halfway uh, by your fold that you made. Got one started there. This is a pretty short piece, so that'll make this a little bit easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this for the other side and then we're gonna put this reinforcement on the shoulder. All right, so we've got our reinforcement and we've got our body. And again, remember, this is going on the outside of the body. So you want to kind of look at your gores that have been attached and you want to see, so there is the inside of the gore, and I can tell that based on my stitching. There is the outside of my gore. So I want to follow that up to the shoulder to make sure I'm on the outside of my shift. The next reinforcement will go on the inside of the body, but this one goes on the outside. So what we'll do is find center, and like I said, I gave a nice crisp uh, kind of finger press to the top of my shift body. So I have a pretty good crease there that you can see. So I'm going to use that crease. And then I'm actually going to crease my little piece here also. And you can do that by finger pressing as well. and grab my pin pillow. And now I'm just going to line up match those creases. I'm going to pin along the center because I'm going to be stitching along the side edges. So I don't want my pins to get in the way. You could baste here as well. Now we don't necessarily know how wide our neckline is going to be yet, so what I would recommend doing is stitching just a couple of inches, and you can see that's what I did on this side. There's still some of it that hasn't been stitched down yet, but I've stitched just a few inches down, probably two or three inches. Most shifts are going to be hmm, somewhere around three inches to four inches on the shoulder, 
depending on your body. So I think if you go two to three inches, you'll be pretty safe. And if we need to stitch more when we decide to do the neckline, then we can do that later. Now, if you already have that neckline that you like from say another shift that you have uh, used in the past, you would be able to go ahead and cut that neckline at this point if you wanted to and you would know exactly what length you need that reinforcement to be. For those of you that have never made a shift before and you maybe don't have a neckline that you're comfortable with or you don't know what kind of neckline you want yet, we're just gonna go ahead and take this kind of partial step and that will prep us for cutting a neckline near the end of today's video. So now, as I said, we're going to backstitch from the outside. So we're gonna go ahead and just run that backstitch right along the edges there. So I'm gonna do that right now. Get my thimble. I've got some thread. Now these stitches tend to be pretty small and pretty fine and regular on those originals. So make them as small as you can, but also, you know, don't beat yourself up if they're not teeny tiny. I know some of you were asking to kind of see the stitch size. Um, keep in mind that the number of stitches per inch on your garment is really going to be dependent on the quality of fabric that you're using. I'm using a really nice linen here that has like a fair number of threads per inch. So I'm able to take mm, on this one about probably, oh, let's see, I'm probably catching maybe anywhere from two to four threads per stitch. And that's going to equate to somewhere around say 14 or so, maybe 14 to 18 stitches per inch. Yours don't have to be that small, especially if you're just starting out. So go as small as you're comfortable with. Challenge yourself to make them as small as you can, but also work within the bounds of your fabric. So once you've finished stitching on your shoulder reinforcements, like you see there, just partially, so just again two inches or so in from the edge, back stitching along both of those, you'll have that little flappy channel there that kind of pops up. Then we are ready to put in the sleeve and seam the body. That's going to happen kind of all in one step. So we're gonna do those sort of at the same time. So we're gonna still wanna have center, which we should still have from that fold on the body. And then we just wanna roughly line up the edge. Now, be careful with this edge because it is on a bias. It is not on grain. So there's gonna be some stretch and some give to it and that's okay. So we're going to want to make sure that we are being careful with the tension as we seam this up because of that bias. Now to put our sleeve in, let's go ahead and we have our sleeve here. We're gonna find the center top of our sleeve as well. And to do that, we really just need to kind of lay it down match the gusset seams, give it a good crease on the top. There we are. And the way that I like to stitch this is actually to have my shift inside out, but my sleeve right side out. And I know that might seem a little backwards, but bear with me. 
but I like to take my sleeve when it is right side out and I actually like to slide it in this way to the garment. So if you can kind of see it's like this and then I'm going to tuck it in between the layers like this so that right sides are facing right sides on the inside. And you can see here, my sleeve is tucked nicely on the inside, I'm going to match my top. So I'm going to show you that one more time because I know it can be a little strange. So we start with our body and it's inside out. We have that fold on the top. And then we're going to take our sleeve, but our sleeve is not inside out. Our sleeve is right side out. And we're going to kind of drop our sleeve in the body, just like that. And now we're just going to line it up carefully starting at the center of the top shoulder. And because we are using reinforcements on this area, we don't have to worry about any type of offsetting or um, anything like that. We can just match the edges here because this is going to be encasing those raw edges. We're, we're not going to be felling this portion of the body because there's no need to. This piece here is going to do all of that work for us, which is actually pretty nice. And it's one of the reasons why I like using this reinforcement on my shifts because it prevents me from having to deal with felling a lot of bulk. Now, this is not a gathered sleeve. But when you do start working with gathered sleeves, you can get quite a bit of fabric that you're working with kind of around this area and it can get a little bit bulky pretty quickly and this can alleviate some of that bulk. But I like using it on kind of all of my shifts. I also find that I tend to have wear on this section of my shifts and this will make my shifts last just a lot longer before they need repair. We'll just pin along. And again, I'm not pulling too tightly, but I am keeping some tension on those pieces. You don't want them to be kind of loosey-goosey, but you also don't want to over-pull on the body because that will give you bubbles. Now as we get to the bottom of the gusset, you're going to see, I'm going to just let it naturally come together at that point. Keeping everything as even as I can. This is where some manipulation is going to happen because I'm going to have to work this in three dimensions. Like you see here, get that point kind of nice and tucked in. So once the sleeve is in, 
you can see we've got that. And we've dealt with the little gusset area there. Then we're going to go ahead and deal with the side seam. Now remember in last week's sew along, I told you to leave this little section unstitched and that's gonna be important right here. So you'll see why we did that now. So to figure out how we want these pieces to meet, and I'll show you how I did it on the other side. So you can see, so this is the interior. You can see how they kind of all nicely overlap and enclose all those edges. I'll show you from the exterior what that looks like. It's kind of minimized the amount of bulk that you have there. To make that happen nicely, um, we're gonna have to make a little bit of a judgment call here. So we're gonna have to look at how they line up and you're going to have to look at how they're folding in relation to one another. So on the inside, how this will look at that intersection is you will have one piece that is the bottom. You can see that it's underneath all of those other folds. You have the body seam that will be in the middle, sandwiched between uh, the bottom and the top. And then you have your top piece that will actually fold over and enclose everything in that area, keeping it nice and neat and tidy. The judgment call happens because you have to decide which piece is going to be the bottom and which piece is going to be the top. Now for this seam, I have one gusset that actually has the loose edge and open section that goes a little taller than the other side. So that means it's going to be a little easier for me to fold that over and tidy everything up. So I'm going to go ahead and make my taller edge my top fold. And that means I'm going to go ahead and fell the rest of my bottom edge for the bottom fold because that fold needs to be completely encased before we seam up the body to make the middle. So once I have finished felling what will become the bottom of that tri intersection, then we can go ahead and pin the rest of the body. So I like to start at the sleeve since we've already pinned that in. And remember my top is here, my bottom one is here. So I'm gonna offset a little bit so that the top fold section on the body seam actually is offset a little bit from the bottom section. Just maybe a quarter inch or so. It just needs to be offset enough for when I fell it over. It'll make the folding process a little bit easier. So we'll go ahead and pin that down to our intersection. Now once we hit that intersection, there are a couple of things that you need to think about when you're pinning. The most important thing is to make sure if we look on the outside, you can see that we have some raw edges on the side and we don't want any of this raw section to stick out after we seam. So it's really important when we're pinning that we drop our seam down to make sure 
we're not going to have any of those raw sections on the outside. Now that is going to make this a tiny bit bulky, but I promise it's not going to be bad once we start sewing. And if you want to check, you can always flip it over. It's always a good way to see kind of how it's looking. Yeah, and you can see we're going to get a really nice intersection there with no raw bits hanging out. So that's looking very, very promising. So let's go ahead and finish pinning down the rest of this side seam, and then we can actually start stitching this up. You can see that my bottom edges are meeting pretty well. Um, keeping that tension helps a lot for, for that. If they're not meeting very well, if you have a really big difference there, you might actually want to unpin a little bit further up and then use your tension on that bias to kind of help them uh, kind of match just a little bit better. So you can see there we have this nicely pinned seam. I'm going to go ahead and start at the hem. I'm going to work my way up to that intersection of the gores. And when we get here, we'll stop and kind of go in slow motion and cover exactly what will make this work smoothly. So let's get to stitching. You can do this with the back stitch, just like we've been doing the rest of the shift. You can see I've been back stitching there. We're approaching the section where all of those will meet. So I'm just going to make sure that I'm stitching right along my pin line. And if you get a little wide here, it's okay. And now I'm going through a couple layers. So if your stitches get a little bit bigger here, that's also okay. You're going through a number of layers of fabric. You can also kind of prick the needle up and down if you really need to, if you're struggling. But I'm not having too difficult of a time getting through all of these layers right here, honestly. I am working with a very lightweight linen though, so a heavier weight linen might make this a little more difficult. Again, the important thing is as you can see, I've made sure that my stitch line has gone well below uh, where the raw edge is on those gore sections. And that's going to leave, you'll notice, that leaves a bigger chunk right here. So on this section, you can see I'm working on a narrower hem and then it kind of gives a little bigger chunk right there. And that's okay. That's going to help us actually keep this nice and tidy. So once you get past that, you just want to ease the seam back into of a nice narrow allowance if you can. So I'm going to go ahead and finish seaming up to the gusset point. So I'm just going to take my back stitch all the way up there 
and we'll come back when we get to that point and I'll show you how to deal with the gusset point sleeve area uh, to finish seaming up our body. So as we come to the underarm gusset, we're stitching, so we're doing our back stitch. We're actually going to separate that section and you're pinching just one section of the body and the gusset and we're going to go from stitching through both pieces of the body to just stitching through that one piece of the body and the gusset. So we've, we've gone through stitching through two pieces of the body to now stitching through the gusset and one piece of the body. And we're just going to do that around the whole section of the sleeve until we get back to our starting point. All right, so as we start to get back around to where the point is of our gusset on the underarm, we're just going to want to carefully stitch. To that point. You can see where that other seam is. So we're just going to want to continue our seam on the gusset right into that point. And that's going to be just a little bit of eyeball work, honestly. You should be able to feel with your back finger kind of where things are sitting to make sure that you're just catching those two layers. And then right when we get to the point, we'll reconnect to the seam going through the two layers of the body instead of one layer of shift body and one layer of gusset. I like to take a couple of extra stitches at that point before I knot off my thread. Now we have the sleeve set in, but we still have to deal with finishing this interior seam. We're going to fell the seam. So I'm going to go ahead and fell up to that intersection and then we'll come back and reconvene and we'll go over in nice detail how we're going to do that so that way you can really, really see that clearly. All right, so I am getting to the point where we're going to fold this little intersection and guys just to show you how easy it can be I seamed that whole seam with my back stitch on the wrong side so it happens to everybody I feel like every shift has at least one thing that's a little goofy um, it happens So you can see we've got our bottom piece there. That was the piece that we seamed earlier and felled. 
knowing that it was going to be the first layer. Now the second layer is going to be our body seam on the side. So we're going to go ahead and fold that over nice and tight. And you can see how kind of right when we get to here, it sort of wants to naturally let everything fold over. So let's go ahead and just thin this a little bit here. Now we've got that folding nicely underneath. And then this was where I told you we had a little bit of that extra. See how this is kind of folding over from our felling before? So we're just going to let that fold over. Tuck it under nice and tight. Now we're going to pin it. And do you see how we have that really nice cross section now where everything, everything lays nicely, everything is nice and tucked, and we can see that from the outside. Yeah, look at, look at how nice that is with all of those meeting. Now we still have to fell this. I was just pinning it because I wanted to show you how that's going to look. So I'm going to go ahead and take this the whole way up and then we'll fell this down by either hemming it or felling it. And we'll want to go back a little because this part here is still a little loose. So we'll fell up to here and then we'll just kind of catch that in that seam. So we're just going to finish turning this under. I'm going to pin it. So I also want to make sure we spend a little time when we get to the gusset. Because again, remember, we are not felling the sleeve in because we have that reinforcement that's going to be going in. So we're only going to take that turn for the felling up to the gusset. So once we hit that gusset area, like you see there, where the triangle point happens, we're just gonna put our last pin for the turn for felling. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hem this down or fell it down, all that turn uh, up through our really nice intersection all the way up to the point of the gusset and then when I'm done with that we'll come back and we're going to put in our reinforcement strips around the sleeve. All right so once that's done um, we still have our hem to go and our reinforcements and our neckline so let's go ahead and deal with our reinforcements first. 
So go ahead and grab one of your reinforcement strips. These should be cut just long enough to go a little bit past the gusset. You want to make sure that they're going to kind of encase that entire uh, length going around the arm at the kind of arm side. So what we're going to do is just like the reinforcements on the top of the shoulder, we're actually going to fold these just a tiny fold in. You can see it's not quite as large as our top of the shoulder reinforcements. Right. All right, so once we have that nice and crisply folded, we are going to take our sleeve area that is still raw. Remember, we've kind of dealt with all of the other edges so far. And let's go ahead and find the center of the length, not the width, but so match up the ends. There we go. And then we'll match that center up. the top. Now here is where it's actually a little easier to pull the sleeve out of the body because we want to turn all of those raw edges that still remain in towards the body. And you can see that here. So we want all of those raw edges, we want to kind of finger press them in towards the body of our shift. And that's because this is going to encase those edges when we put this on. So taking our center fold, and match it to the top center just like we did with our other reinforcement, essentially. And then what we're going to do is take that fold and line it up on the seam. You wanna cover that stitching kind of right on that line. You don't want it to be really far over. And then we're just going to keep it nice and flat and take that other folded edge. And we might as well pin that down now as well. Because all we're going to do with this piece, once it's secured, is we are going to hem along either side of that folded edge on this reinforcement. 
So we're going to hem here or fell, we're going to hem here or fell, just to kind of secure that reinforcement down. And you can see how it has nicely sandwiched, right? It has encased that raw edge. It's sandwiched those raw edges between uh, the body itself and the reinforcement. So I'm going to go ahead and finish pinning this and then I'll show you guys what that looks like. All right, so once we get down to the gusset area, we're gonna wanna open up the shift like you see here. So we've got our sleeve, and then we just have it laying a little bit flat because what we need to do is we need to actually bring these down past the point of the gusset, which you can see there. And then we're going to drop them down along that felled edge a little bit. So they're going to make kind of like a little bit of a Y shape at that point. Following the gusset line until they hit the seam. And some of this seam has been felled because it's just below that point, but that's okay. We want to have a little bit of that overlap. And then we're just going to take the end and fold it under to finish it. So just fiddle with your corners a little bit to make them nice. And we can just pin that. And honestly, I will probably go back and baste this before I pin it because there's just a lot of pins here that you're going to be working around. But I find it helpful to pin before I baste in this instance, just because there are a lot of fiddly bits that we're working around here. So um, you can choose to baste if you want to. You don't have to. You all know how I feel about basting. You'll see basting all over this shift. We're just going to do the same thing there. There we go. All right, so now really the only thing left for me to do is to hem both sides of these. And I'm going to go ahead and baste first and then hem, but you don't have to do that if you don't want to. We're going to do this to both sides. So we're going to do this to the other sleeve as well. So go ahead, take a few minutes. I'm going to get this situated. Uh, you all can get your two sleeve reinforcements situated and then we'll come back for the next step. Hey, we're looking more and more like a shift. We have our sleeves. I've actually turned this uh, right side out now. So we have our sleeves, we have our reinforcements all put in. We still have those little dangly bits on our shoulder reinforcements, but that's okay um, because we're going to be dealing with those in just a little bit. There are two things left. We need to obviously take care of the neckline, um, but we also need to take care of the hem. Let's go ahead. I think it'll be a little bit easier right now while we're in the groove of kind of stitching to just go ahead and take care of our hem. And then when we're kind of done with the majority of the stitching, we'll go ahead and circle back to the neckline. For the hem, we want to really just do a, a regular hem like we've done on the aprons, like we've done on our petticoats. We just want to turn up twice and hem or fell. So what that will look like is turning up twice, which you can see me doing here. I do want to touch on one thing though. Uh, you'll notice here we've got some funky geometry going on. 
Um, this happens in shifts. It also happens sometimes in bed gowns as well, depending on how they're cut. Sometimes we do see like really weird, saggy, strange bits happening on the sides of shifts because of the way that the gussets kind of work out in terms of their geometry. But if this is going to like really drive you crazy, or honestly, if you find that it's like a little bit difficult to try to hem that bit, you can, I know we don't usually recommend like trimming things off, but you can straighten this out a little bit. If it's really going to bug you though, feel free to trim a little bit of that off and I can show you kind of what that would look like. You don't want to trim too much. Because you did all that nice seaming. But trimming a little bit can just kind of smooth that out. And like a, this is really all that I took off is about that much. I can just make it a little bit easier to hem going around that angle. So I'm going to go ahead. Let's hem just while we're thinking about it. All right, so once our hem is done, it's really just the neckline that is left and we will have a finished shift. Yay! So let's go ahead and look at something you're going to want to think about when you're thinking about your neckline and that's the shape of it. So you can see here there are three kind of main neckline shapes. These shapes change and evolve throughout the period but they can also change and evolve based on the body. For instance, I have fairly wide shoulders. However, my shoulders have a very dramatic slope to them. So they're very sloped shoulders, which means for me, um, a square neckline actually is very, very helpful. If I were to wear an oval neckline on my shift, um, I just kind of look like an extra in a really bad pirate movie. <laughs> uh, it just wants to slide off because even if it's a shallow oval, that fabric just wants to splay out. So it's not a neckline that necessarily is too big that's going to cause slippage. Sometimes it's the shape of the neckline that can help control some of that. So I'm going to be cutting my neckline pretty square today. If you have broad but like straighter shoulders that aren't sloping as much, you can probably much more safely use an oval neckline and that will give you some adjustment as well. There are deeper oval necklines, there are shallower oval necklines. Unfortunately, a lot of this is just trial and error and figuring out what works for you and what doesn't. Of course, there are references in the 18th century of shifts that have some really interesting treatments to the neckline. There are some references to shifts that are gathered um, just across the back. And as a sloped shoulder person, if I were to buy a shift ready made, I could see that being a viable option. In fact, I have done that to some shifts before where it's just the back that needs to be pulled in to essentially provide uh, a tighter control over the gappage uh, and, and the slippage on my shoulders. And so just putting in a couple of tucks or gathers across the back of that shift would fix it for me. Um, there are shifts that have gathering put in other places, maybe just the front or just over the shoulder. So if you cut your neckline, not just too big, but if you cut it the wrong shape, feel free to manipulate that to make it work for you. There is uh, no reason to scrap a whole shift just because the neckline gets a little wonky, especially on your first one. But we're going to walk you through a couple of steps that will hopefully help your neckline really get refined and be pretty good kind of right out of the gate. Uh, especially if this is your first shift, we want you to have success with that. If this is not your first shift, 
If this is your 50th shift and you already have a neckline that really works for you, that you love, go ahead and just use that neckline when we cut the neck of the shift. That's totally fine. But if you don't have a neckline that you love yet, or if you haven't made a shift before to even know what neckline you might like, um, try this out and see if it helps. Grab some paper. I actually like to use um, large paper for this because I find that it works a little bit better and the measurements are already close to what I'm going to need. Uh, and get some kind of writing utensil, some kind of straight edge ruler, and some scissors as well. We're going to use paper to help us kind of craft a neckline that we think we will like. And then we will fiddle with it on the paper and then we'll transfer it to our garment. So let's take our shift and starting on one edge of the paper, let's line up our shift and without getting anything on your shift or you'll regret it and you'll probably hate me. <laughs> um, go from seam to seam and just make a little mark on the paper kind of where your seam ends. And that looks pretty good. And then let's go ahead and we'll find the center by folding our paper to that mark. So there's our mark and I'm just folding it over to give me a center line. This is going to help me for the next step. Now this next part is going to be a combination of personal preference, eyeballing it maybe, and also using originals to inform our decision because we need to determine then how thick we want uh, the kind of straps, if you will, the shoulder straps of our shift to actually be. Um, in originals, they can range from anywhere from say like three to I've seen some that were almost like five inches wide, just depends on the body that's wearing them. So I like to have mine somewhere between three to four inches. I think for this one, I'm going to go ahead and say three inches. So I'm going to take my ruler and I am going to measure in from my edge three inches and put a mark and then I'm going to measure in from remember I had my line there from my other measurement measure in from that three inches and make a mark so what I have here now is my finished neckline obviously we want to add a little bit extra for allowance but this is going to be pretty close to kind of where I want it to be when I'm done. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take just another sheet of paper and this actually works out where I can go this way which is kind of nice. I'm just going to go ahead. The back of the shift neckline is never really as deep as the front, so we don't need to fold this in half to make that work. We can actually fold it just kind of like that. Give yourself a little bit more on the bottom than you have on the top. So this is our shoulder, essentially. So let's find center on this all right and let's match center on our papers and then Remember, we're going to add a little bit for allowance here to turn over because we're going to need to turn that over twice for a hem. 
on the neckline. So we don't want it to be you know, too wide. So with my allowance, I'm gonna add just a little bit there and a little bit there. Okay, so I can put this paper to the side now. So here is kind of where it's gonna be. And I don't want my shift to be so low that it doesn't help support my bust and my stays, but I also don't want it to be really high. I will say this though. Yes, you could put a drawstring in your shift. We know that there are originals that have very narrow cords inside of them. They don't seem to be doing a ton of work, but they are doing some work uh, to help adjust the neckline. But in my opinion, it is still better to cut it too small the first time and open it up than it is to cut it really, really large the first time and then have to put a drawstring in all of your shifts. So try kind of cutting a little bit more conservatively than you think you might need to because it's really easy to make this too big. So to help get our shape now, what we're gonna do is just take like a string or anything like that and we need to get the depth of how low we want the shift to sit. So put this on the top of your shoulders and I really honestly don't like my shifts to be super duper low. I have a very full bust and I find that um, keeping them not, you know, like a turtleneck or anything like that, but keeping them just a little bit higher than I might feel like I want to go actually gives me a little bit more control in my bust when I'm in my stays. Keep in mind though, you don't want to cut it too low here because unless you're in your stays when you're taking this measure where my bust is sitting right now in a brazier is a very different place than where my bust is sitting when I'm in my stays so I know that when I'm in my stays my bust is a lot higher so I'm going to keep that in mind because actually this is probably about where I like my shifts to sit because when my bust is in stays, uh, this is gonna be just a little bit above my stay line. Um, so I have about that much, and that checks out. That's about nine and a half inches, which is about what I like to cut for my shifts. Um, so if I look at that on the paper, yeah, that puts me kind of right there. Now, again, I want to add a little bit for allowance because I don't want it to be so low. Uh, if I have to fold over, say, a quarter inch twice, that's going to be a half an inch it's going to take out. So I want to make sure that I add a little bit for allowance. So now I have this mark here. So now I'm just going to fold this over. And here is where your eyeball is going to be very important because now that we have kind of our depth and we have the width, the rest of this curve in between can be variable. So like I said, I'm gonna be cutting a fairly square neckline because I know that that's what works for me. Now that I have my mark, I have my width and I have my length, this curve in between is really going to be a choice that you make kind of by eye, thinking about what some of those shapes might look like. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this down, kind of straight for a little bit. Because I know if I start to make it too ovular, it'll just start to fall off of my shoulders. So I'm gonna keep this straight for a little bit here. So you can kind of see now the line that I'm sort of going for. And 
sometimes your first line isn't that pretty and that's okay. All right, so that's a pretty uh, rectangular neckline that I think will work pretty well for me. So we'll cut this. And if you want to, you can kind of put that there and you can sort of see what that will look like. Um, I think once my bust is raised a little bit in my face, that'll be pretty good. Um, but you'll notice when I open this up, I still have like all of this chunky stuff back here. That's because we didn't do anything with the back yet. So as I said, the back usually isn't as deep as the front. And you don't want the back to be super deep because if it is, then uh, it's just going to widen up that whole neckline and you're gonna have a lot of issues with things falling off. My shifts usually come, and for me, I usually have them kind of somewhere around back there. Uh, and so I kind of just, you can take a tape measure and you could measure that distance kind of from the nape to where you want your shift to hit. For me, I know that it's kind of just a few fingers. So if I put my hand here, I know that kind of right around there is where I like the back of my shift to sit. So if I just take my hand, I can kind of eyeball it. <laughs> um, and I will fold again. And then here's the important thing. You want to make sure that you're not cutting your front too. You only want to cut the back. All right, so this is my neckline. Now your neckline may look different and that's okay. So don't panic if yours doesn't look the same because we may not have the same body type and we may not have the same measurements. Um, but once you have a neckline kind of figured out and you could cut this out of, uh, you know, you could take a piece of muslin and cut the hole out and put the muslin on and see what you think. But honestly, the sleeves are going to affect the way that this fits. So I'm gonna show you how to cut this out um, conservatively with your neckline so that you can try it on with the sleeves and everything in to see how things are pulling and if it opens the neckline up too much. So let's do that. And you just wanna go ahead and line up your center and line up your fold over the shoulder as well. And what I like to do is pin around you could chalk this as well or baste it I just find that I don't usually have colored chalk on hand most of the chalk that I use is white. And so that makes it a little bit difficult to see, obviously, on this. So I usually just end up pinning it. All right, and then obviously we're gonna need to flip it over to the back and do the 
same thing there. And you can see my pins kind of went through. I'm going to go ahead and uh, fix that in just a minute. I just want to get the back done. Because I'm probably going to have to fix those pins also. What we're going to do is we're going to cut a little bit out of this neckline and you're going to put the shift on and you're going to see how it is. The important thing is not to cut too much out of the back, if you're, especially if your back is already like pretty high like mine is. Um, so we just want to make a little cut in the center, maybe an inch and a half or so down. And then... We're going to cut a little bit, not all the way out to your side, but a little bit, maybe an inch or so in, just in case we kind of, you know, cut too much on our paper. We want to make sure that this gives us a second chance to fix it if we need to. All right, and then on the front only, we can take that cut a little bit deeper, maybe halfway, a little over halfway, as deep as we think we need it. This should give us about enough to put our head through. I'm going to try this. I'm wearing a handkerchief on my head, so this could get interesting. Okay, so you can see the length. Um, and that's a pretty good length for me. Uh, what you're seeing here at the neck um, is actually like a, an okay neckline. I'm gonna open this up the whole way though, and in the in the back as well, because I don't think it's gonna be too big. So I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna open it up, and I'm gonna put it back on, and I'm gonna see what that does to the rest of the garment because it might actually change the way that the sleeves are sitting. After indecently lifting my bosom off camera, um, just to kind of imitate where my bust would be when it's in stays, what I found is that uh, this needs to be even a little more square than it is right now. I'm just going to put a pin kind of right where I think that's going to need to go. The back, however, is way too high for me. So I'm going to take that down about maybe an inch and a half, two inches, because that's actually going to open up some of the neckline in the front as well. These things are all kind of related. This is what I mean, though, when I say that it's better to cut too small and to put it on and go like, ooh, this is too high or this is way higher than what I wanted because you can always take it out a little bit at a time. It's not even a bad idea to just kind of wear this around the house for a little bit and see if you notice the neckline doing anything funky before you make any kind of adjustments to it, just so that you don't end up accidentally going like, oh, this looks too high here and too high there and too closed in here. And then you take you know, three inches here and one inch here and two and a half inches here. And then the next thing you know, you can get into your shift by just pulling it up from the floor, um, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but you don't want to have to go through all of that work to try to get a, a well-fit neckline just to have everything end up being too big and falling off. So also keep in mind that I'm putting this on over clothes. Um, I would recommend if you're doing this at home that you do it uh, over the only things that you would normally wear underneath your shift, which really should be like nothing. So do it in your bathroom. Um, I just don't feel like we're that close yet. There we go. 
So the only thing left to do with this shift now is to finish the neckline. And to do that, you're just going to want to extend your shoulder reinforcements all the way to the end of the neckline. And then of course, trim off any extra. So once your reinforcements are extended, just turn the neckline under twice to hem, just like every other hem we've done. So once you've finished hemming your neckline, yay, you're done, hooray. I'm gonna pick that up. I put a lot of work into that. So friends, thank you so much for joining us for the Ship Sew Along series. We are gonna be taking a one week break from Sew Alongs. We'll have a couple of other things going on for you in that time. And then Brooke will be joining us next time for bed gowns. Be sure to subscribe to our channel if you want to be one of the first people to know when new videos go up. And as always, friends, stay safe and keep sewing.